Sarah, here goes. Country roads, take me home. To the place where I belong. West Virginia? Mountain mama, take me home. Country roads. Not just a mountain mama, but a millennium mountain mama. You see, the words of that song imply that the person or the thing, the entity, has strayed away from home, that it's gotten far from the original intent, from the purpose, the things that are noble, just, good, and safe. And in this case, things that are progressive. I'm humbled and I'm honored to be able to speak to you today and like any good researcher, I started researching what I thought my topic was going to be. And after hours and hours of research and reading and articles, I had to talk about what was particularly salient to me. At first, I wanted to talk about being a small local business owner in southern West Virginia, or even better yet, a female small business owner in Southern West Virginia, or even better, better yet, a black female small business owner in West Virginia. But what I found out was something that West Virginians have known all along. I bought into hook, line, and sinker the wild and wonderful West Virginia. And to my dismay, a couple of legislatures. They want to talk about renaming, reshaping, giving a new twist to the image and the culture of West Virginia. Okay, I thought about that. And I read some more, I researched some more, I talked some more, and what I realized was we have to challenge that notion. We have to challenge the notion of this new movement and this new image improvement of West Virginia. Why? Hell, we've always been open for business. <laughs> Pictured here are two black women in the early 1900s who are selling their goods on the street. Entrepreneurialism at its best. Have we lost this? Has it actually gone anywhere? Or have those of you sitting here all of these years gotten complacent? What I realized is that West Virginia is as progressive as ever. West Virginia has always been on the cutting edge of things. Despite how the media, my hometown, portrays good old, by God, West Virginia, West Virginia has been in the forefront of many concepts. Consider 1831, girls' academies popped up all over West Virginia, giving the average woman the opportunity to learn and receive a higher education. Consider this, in the mid-1800s, the very important Women's Act that gave married women the right to own property. Far before, decades before, other states even implemented this act. But why is this so important? A woman, married, owning property, why is this so significant? It becomes significant later on when women have the right to vote and one of the prerequisites in many states, not just for women, but for men as well, was owning property. If you did not own property, it was hard to attain the right to vote. So as you can see, West Virginia leads the way. Consider also that there have been numerous what we believe to be novel concepts. Hillary Clinton, seeing women in the political arena. This is not new to West Virginia. For you see, the first Republican Party presided over by a woman happened 
in West Virginia. Now, Derek talked earlier about that bad romance between West Virginia and coal. And I'm sure that we can all agree that bad romances often produce a love child. <laughs> I'd like to call this love child by its first and last name, which would be little bitty race, last name relations. West Virginia, despite the bad romance, encapsulated something that is very important, race relations. When my husband and I got here, we started researching. And my husband would come home with different black and whites, different pictures. And one of the things that was so poignant to us was looking at pictures of black men and white men working side by side in the coal mines. And I'm not talking about in 1983, or 2003, I'm talking about in the late 1800s or early 1900s. And this was completely unheard of in any other state in the Union. What I'm suggesting and what I am hypothesizing today is that there is no real novel concept here. West Virginian women have been pioneers on so many different levels. Here we see a political figure and we see an educator right here from West Virginia. So this is what I want you to spread. One is we have to build on the strength of our ancestors. Some of my four mothers, 22 of them to be exact, in 1913, January 13th, sat down to forge the way. They decided that they could not be a collective group of socialites. They needed to be politically active and they needed to be involved in making change. And they formed a sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, the Delta standing for change. And ironically, their very first act of public service happened on March 3rd, 1913, and you commonly know it as the Women's Suffrage March. Even though they were in the back of the parade, they were there. This same sagacity, this same spirit, we have to uphold today. We have to build on the strengths of those two women standing on the street, selling their goods, making a living for themselves and their family. That spirit must live on, and it must live on through us. Number two, get over the fear of success. Who are you not to be successful? Who are you not to be great? Who are you not to take control? Number three, see yourself as worthy and competent. When I came to West Virginia, there was a great marketing tool and package put together for me. I was courted by the federal government. And in that packet of recruitment was the offer to get your student loans repaid. Now that to me sounded delicious. But several years later, that has not happened. And I thought to myself, self, myself said yes. What are we going to do about this? And why haven't we done anything about it before now? Myself paused and answered and said, perhaps it is not until now that you have felt competent and worthy enough to receive what was promised. Hmm. Immediately, I made an appointment to talk to the boss's boss's boss. That's where you have to start. <laughs> and then if that doesn't work, you go to the boss's 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 boss and have a talk with them. And I looked at them square in the face and I said simply, I believe that I have proven to you that I am a good investment. 
So you have to see yourself as competent. You have to see yourself as worthy. Number four is cultivate your unique gift. Did you not enjoy the beautiful singing today? Wasn't it amazing? Cultivate the gift that you have. Nurture it. Water it. Watch it grow. If you need to take courses to cultivate that, do that. Find classes. Find courses. Find mentors. Find someone who believes in your gift and your vision and make it happen. And number five. Believe in something bigger than yourself. We've heard a lot about spirituality and how important that is, and I absolutely agree. Currently, I work as a clinical psychologist at the Federal Bureau of Prisons, and I understand in that moment with a patient how important spirituality really is. There aren't a lot of us clinical psychologists. I can't imagine why working with the average serial killer or serial rapist is not interesting to everybody else. But nonetheless, when I sit down and talk to inmates about ending their lives, when I am on that crusade for suicide prevention, it is often the people that come to me at wit's end feeling hopeless as if there are no more options left and when I ask them, sir, do you believe in anything? Well, what do you mean? I mean, spiritually, do you believe in a higher power, something that's bigger than yourself? Nine times out of 10, my inmates that I ultimately put on suicide watch because they feel it's time to end their life have no belief in a power bigger than themselves. Do not fall for that trap. When you decide that there is no power bigger than you, you assume all responsibility for everything that happens, not only in your life, but in the world. Resolve yourself to, their, to the fact that there is something bigger than you, someone or something that can handle the problem that you just cannot. And when you emulate these things, when you build on the rich history of West Virginia, I focus today on the females, but be it male or female. If you can get over the fear of being successful, if you can find a way to see yourself as more than competent and more than worthy of the best that life has to offer. When you start to cultivate that unique gift that only you have, and when you come to the resolve that you are able to believe in something bigger than yourself, you will then, without a doubt, be considered a millennium mountain mama or mountain man. Thank you.